What's up, Bill? Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, 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 brother. How are you? How are you good. guys? Thank you uh, so much for joining us, man. And I do want to, I'm terrible with pronunciation. Is, is it Adarsh, right? Yeah, it's Adarsh. 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 Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure I was pronouncing that correctly. Well, uh, I hope you're doing well. You're you're having a very busy season right now. <laughs> Busier than usual, yeah, yeah, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, having a good 2021. Yeah. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Yes. How did that... Uh, when you got the uh, when you got the BAFTA uh, nomination, how'd that uh, how'd that feel, man? I felt like it was a mistake, bro. Honestly, like <laughs> I I saw my name in the long list and I said, "What? My name is next to fucking sorry. Uh, my name is next to Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins and like you know Riz Ahmed and Chadwick Boseman." And I said, "Well, you know, it's got to be a mistake." You know, I felt like. Well, this is this is an accident, and you know, let's let's be, uh, be let's let's yeah, let's be happy with this accident. And then the shortlist came out, <laughs> and then I was just in shock. I had to read it like a couple of times to make sure that I was reading it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. very very much deserved. Um, that of all the things we enjoyed about White Tiger, the thing that stood out to us the most, and we said this in our review, was how impressed we were with you carrying that film. And the level at which you uh, performed as an actor, we were really impressed with you. As obviously the whole international community has been impressed with White Tiger. You uh, much deserved. We were so excited to see your BAFTA nomination. And then obviously, what what about adapted screenplay, brother? What about that for the Oscars? <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought that my first international film that I was part of would be nominated for the Oscar? It's like a dream run, man. There's, yeah. I mean, I. I always fall short of words to express what I'm what I'm feeling right now. You know, it's it's so it's so bizarre, and it, it seems like it seems like some sort of story that I'm reading. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can't really expect what to you you can't really anticipate what will come next, and then there's the Oscars. You know, like it's crazy. It really and, is. And yeah, were you watching uh, for the Baftas and the Oscars? Were you watching the live uh, nominations announced? Not the BAFTA. Okay. Uh, I was watching the Oscar nomination. Yeah. Actually, when that was being announced, I was working out in the gym. So I I just finished working out and I saw like a flurry of messages and I said, I think something's happening. And then I opened. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I was like, whoa, okay. But uh, the Oscars, yes, I was watching it live. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Which yeah. I, I don't know how Priyanka could maintain her composure when they announced adapted screenplay for White Tiger, right? She was amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, so you've actually worked with quite a few massive stars in your career already, from Shah Rukh Khan to Shridevi, I believe, Nawaz, and now Priyanka, Rajkumar, and, and, and many others. How, what was it like working alongside uh, like Rajkumar and, and, and Priyanka in, in The White Tiger? Um, you know, like, first of all, I just, like, I've always been a massive fan of both, both their bodies of work. Yeah. But I feel that it's such a privilege to get to know them in person mm -hmm. and to know the kind of work ethics they have and to see the kind of passion that they, they still have for their craft mm -hmm. and the zeal and to not become complacent after being active for so many years. You know, it gets very easy for actors to take it easy to just, you know, like, let the fire down and, you know, like, Oh, you know, I'm going to do what comes my way kind of attitude. But both of them have this sort of fire going on in their belly. And they're just so hungry to do good work. And it's so inspirational, man, just to be around them and to see how present they are when they're doing a scene. And I had the time of my life shooting for it because, like, also Ramin, the kind of director he is, he loves to prepare. He does a lot of homework. He, he really puts in a lot of effort and, you know, which is why his films look so natural so behind making it natural there's a lot of process that that happens um and the kind of freedom that he allowed us to like sort of improvise with our scenes and play with it you know in spite of knowing the script through and through and being um an integral part of the book right when it was being written because he was uh arvind that yeah. he got back from the university so in spite of being so thorough with the story he still gave us the kind of creative freedom to 
you know go and really explore our truths and our interpretations of the characters and i think it was incredibly graceful of him to do that and i just had such an insane time shooting for it man can't tell you yeah that's very encouraging because when you're doing something that's taken from another source like a book the the a director's tendency might be to not let you do that and say no 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 we have to stick to the text we have to stick to the book and i think it's beautiful that you were given that creative freedom are you sitting inside a ufo yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually up at the space station right now. I'm getting ready for the next Tom Cruise film. Ah, yes, Stupid. yes. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you get involved with White Tiger? What? How did you get? How did you get involved with that film? Well, you know, I was um, a Tess Joseph, who's the casting director of the film. One of our assistants got in touch with me, and I was trying to get get an audition with Tess for for, for quite some time. And um, you know, I got a call, and my only intention at that point in time was just to give. a good audition so that i would get called for more auditions in the future because even entertaining that thought of oh i could be balram just seemed so bizarre so i was like man let's not get there let's just you know uh let's take it easy one step at a time let's give a good audition so that she calls me for more stuff and then before i knew it i was five rounds through and ramin went back to new york and told me that you know he wants me to play balram that's awesome wow and what was yeah. the What was your process like? Because this character, which once again you stole the show in, in, in this movie, has such an arc uh, for for a character. Yeah. Uh, what was yeah. the what was was it difficult playing these many different uh, times in this young man's life? Uh, what was your what was the process like for that? It was it was. I certainly felt that the Bangalore version of it, once I become the entrepreneur, was more difficult for me because I spent. about 90% of my time understanding the the balram from the village you know because that forms mm-hmm. the crux of the story and it's the story is actually about his journey from the village to the time he goes to bangalore and not so much about what he how it how his story turns out to be one season bangalore it's about before he goes to bangalore right so i i was focused on more on that part of the, on that part of the story and you know i went to a village in the eastern part of india stayed there for a couple of weeks and i actually wanted to drive for for a wealthy person here either in delhi or in mumbai but i was finding it tough to sort of um, you know find find a job like that cuz who would keep me uh, as mm-hmm. a driver with no prior driving experience and you know so then um, yeah man i mean i i came back i came to delhi um, four months three and a half to four months before the shoot started and i started working at a small stall where i was cleaning plates and um, you know um, keeping the place tidy running small errands for for the owner of the small stall and i used to get paid 100 bucks a day which is the equivalent of say like 1 and 1/2 dollars a day uh it was like um like earning a daily wage and um, thereafter i um, you know i i i used to be present at all the auditions that ramin like he gave me that option that he said hey man like you know i'm going to be casting a lot of actors for this film so uh, most of those characters have scenes with you so would you want to be present at the audition I said hell yeah man I mean this is yeah. like incredible opportunity. you know it's like it's like net practice yeah. um like cricket right like you yeah. practice in the net before you play a game so I said yeah man it sounds like a great it sounds like a great thing to do and you know I I went and I was present at all all their auditions and I tried different permutations and combinations with the scene and um I actually I actually uh, constructed the Bangalore Balram character entirely out of books I got myself a bunch of uh, books on body language and on how to conduct yourself in a room and how to impress another person and you know like very very basic books on uh, how to uh, speak in English properly stuff like that you know stuff that Balram would have read once he went to Bangalore in order to yeah. sort of very carefully um sort of you know like build this image that he had built for himself as a businessman So yeah I'm, I I was actually a little scared about that part. I wasn't quite sure about how that would la- how that would land or whether it would work but I guess it worked. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it did it it did work. Your uh the homework that you did um and the freedom you were given on set and all the research that you did everything showed and we were deeply impressed with your performance. Uh this is kind of a question most actors don't like to hear. but were you happy with the final outcome of the film did you like how it turned out particularly for yourself did you leave thinking yeah i i feel good about what we did with that 
you know, I have to be very honest with you. This is one of the very, very rare times that I was actually happy with what I what I had done. Um, and I I can't say that I never say that, but like I actually was because I knew that I was in. <clears throat> I was working with a great director. I was working with somebody who was single-mindedly focused and dedicated towards what he does and is so passionate about passionate about films. However, the only thing that I was skeptical about was the voiceover bit because I had never done a voiceover and never been a narrator and we spent a lot of time recording those voiceovers almost like across the span of 4 to 5 months. Mm, almost yeah. we had like 20, 25 sessions where we recorded the whole bit. So I wasn't too sure about how the voiceover would sound because you know I, I was like it, it it could very easily slip off into that zone where it's so droning that you'll fall off to sleep listening to my voice. Sure. Yeah. I was like, you know, is this going to work is this not and I w- I wasn't sure about it till the last moment. In fact, even when the film came out I I would ask people I I would ask them did that bother you at all and they said no it seemed fine, you know. It it didn't seem to distract us from the story. Yeah, you you really really carried that film but, being but I, I definitely that I need to work on on that on that front to become like a better sort of because I really enjoy telling stories but I guess I've got to figure a way to to make it more engaging and interesting for the people listening to it. Oh no, you were you were you were absolutely perfect in Very the film. Engaging, yeah. Every every <laughs> single every single scene you were in uh which is incredibly difficult to say you stole the show when you're in a film with Raj Kumar Rao and Priyanka Chopra uh <laughs> the the fact that you you were able to carry those scenes with those heavyweight actors is is deeply impressive and i know you've said uh that you you've wanted to act obviously in hollywood but uh in, in indian films as well but other languages and you want to learn other languages so language is not really a barrier for you for your for your acting and you could just uh do 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 what you do what you do like in malayalam right have you gotten any offers from other yeah, I, from other regions i think so far i actually so i'm i speak telugu which is one of the south indian languages there's there's telugu there's tamil there's malayalam there's kannada there's uh, tulu mm-hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of very very interesting work happening in tamil and malayalam particularly mm-hmm. and my father actually spent um some time in tamil nadu uh, back in the 80s and he picked up the language oh cool so yeah so i i have been taking some tamil classes from him whenever i find the time honestly the last two two and a half three weeks it's it's just been such a mad ride that i've not been able to spend enough time doing my homework and you know learning the language but it's definitely something that i want to learn and master uh, both the languages tamil and malayalam Absolutely. yeah 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 Do do you also see yourself now I don't know if you felt this way before White Tiger um and now it's just expanded but the film obviously has international attention and with Priyanka who is an international star and has both feet firmly planted in Indian cinema and American cinema is American cinema and television something that you very much want to see as part of your overall work that you do Why not yeah I'd love to I'd absolutely yeah, love to good. in fact I- working on my american accent for the last um, during the entire duration of the lockdown i was i just went through a bunch of youtube videos and you know whatever free stuff that i could lay my hands on because i wasn't making any money so i couldn't afford to like get a diction coach or a language coach so i just like you know all the free videos that were out there on youtube i just like went through them all and you know i spent around 5 months doing that practiced it for 2 hours every day got myself a coach um, by september and did 15 sessions with him So I guess I'm about 65 to 70% there and the rest of the 30% journey I feel will happen once I I am in America physically in person and interact with people there yeah. cuz uh you know I don't want to I think it's very um unrealistic and foolish to sort of like I feel it's very important for me to be there physically to understand the culture because through my understanding of the culture will I be able to portray the people that I'm going to be playing because you know right now all my references are from pop culture and from things that I've seen i mean of sure. course emotions are universal and people are the same across but you know culture plays such a significant part on how you present yourself and how you talk and all of that right yeah, so yes. yeah I'm, i'm i'm hoping that i get i get some time to sort of i have that luxury to come to america and spend some time there and um, really invest in understanding the place and you know understanding the people there Absolutely. You seem like a very well read and uh you 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 like to do your research uh and study and stuff. 
Have you uh, taken a bunch of, uh, or have you read a bunch of uh, acting methods? Do you have a favorite one that you subscribe to mostly, or is it just a combination of all of them? Yeah, not really. You know, like I, I went to drama school for a year, and um, that is that is pretty much the place where I got my preliminary understanding of different kinds of techniques. I did some animal study. I did some um, mm -hmm. life study. I studied some basics of Stanislavski. Um, but I can't say that I've studied anything in depth to really adapt that. Um, what I do is just a combination of different things that I feel works for me. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's good. It, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely working. Um, and, and what, speaking of working, are there other projects that are coming up that we should know about or you can talk about that we could let everybody know you're involved in? Yeah, there's, there's something exciting that I'm part of that starts from November, which is an Indian project. Um, they haven't they haven't released an official statement yet, so unfortunately I can't speak about it. But you know, it's, it's, uh, they're probably going to release a, a statement on it in the next couple of weeks, and you know, I, like I'll be able to speak about it more often. But I'm already training for it. Um, it involves right. a physical transformation, so like you know, I'm hitting the gym hard. I'm following a diet and um, a physical PT is like you know, physical training is something that I've never. I mean, I believe in keeping myself fit, and I always work out. I go for runs and all of that, but to work out with weights and to work out with a trainer is something that I've, I haven't really done. So it's a very new experience for me. I'm doing some kickboxing. I'm doing calisthenics. So it's exciting. Really exciting. Great. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. And so you probably have gotten asked this quite a few times, but uh, I haven't heard the answer. Uh, what was it like as a young child working with Shah Rukh Khan on, uh, on uh, My Name is Khan? Well, I never met him. You never met him? Mm. Oh, well, well, never mind. Never, never mind. That makes sense, <laughs> considering that you were him. So he just was <laughs> never there. Now, what about, what, okay, so what about on? Uh, did you? Uh, what was it like working on Mom? Was that your first real big project when you worked on Mom? Yeah, that was my big first big commercial project. I had worked on Rook before that, which was, um, which was, which was a smaller project in terms of scale, but equally enjoyable. But Mom was definitely a bigger project. I worked with Three Ma'am. I worked with Nawal Sir on it. And um, yeah, man, it was it was incredible. Like Ravi Udhyavar, the director of the film, is I think he's a visionary. He studied arts from one of the most prestigious art schools in India called JJ School of Arts. So he has a very aesthetic way of looking at things. And like you know, um, like the way Wes Anderson, like you know, all his frames are very like beautiful to look at. I think even Ravi Udhyavar's frames are like that. You know, they're very aesthetic looking. He brings in a lot of art influences that he's had over the years. And um, I, ha I had a great time working on this film. I, I mean, I had a few scenes with Three Ma'am. I had like two or three scenes, which were which were phenomenal for me. Like you know, just to be around her and she 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 she's a reserved person. She didn't really speak a lot, but um, my experience of working with her, sharing screen space with her, was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of people get to say they did that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, so now that you've got some like a, a claim to you and you can start kind of almost choosing what roles you want to choose, what attracts you most to the, your roles that, that you're? Um, I would say there are like three or four things and all of them have to come together for me to be like really excited about it. Yeah. Um, I think first and foremost is the story and the script. Um, the director who is basically responsible for executing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the dialogues are written, you know, it's very easy for dialogues to appear like dialogues unless it's intentional, uh, you know, unless it's like a Shakespearean thing where you want it to sound theatrical. Um, but otherwise, I feel like, you know, uh, films should be like, it, it's a very intimate space, you know, it, it, it should feel like you're listening to a conversation and not something that's made up, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that that's very important. And uh, of course, the producer, because he's responsible to present the film and like, decides the scale in which it will be presented and the kind of reach that it will have. Mm. Um, yeah, man. So I'm just, I'm, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's foolish of me to sort of look for all these four things in projects, but like, I really believe that I work for myself. I'm, you know, I don't, um, I just want to be happy myself when I do something. I want to be consumed by it and really affected and engaged by it. Yeah. Um, so... Who are some of the actors that you look up to and have inspired you throughout your life that are like your favorite, whether they're male, female, Indian, American, doesn't matter. Sure. Um, I think um, Meryl Streep, mm. uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, Joe mm. Pesci. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. Sure. Um, Tom Hanks. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio, Christian Bale, mm. Heath Ledger mm. uh, from India. There's Siddiqui. There's Irfan Khan. Um, there's um, Nasiruddin Shah. Uh, Pankaj Tripathi now. There's K K Menon, Manoj Bajpai, Rajpal Yadav. I love Rajpal Yadav. Yeah, um, we, we, so many, so many. we 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 would get along. We would get along just fine. Yeah, you yeah, just named like all of our favorite all actors. Names, <laughs> you named all of our favorite actors. It's like yeah, you're reading our books. This is just like exactly who we love as well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know this. So how, how, did, how did I miss Anthony Hopkins? Sir Anthony Hopkins. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you see the father? The goat. I have. I've actually seen the. There's, you know, there was a play that was made in India. It's a, it's actually a French play, right? So it's an adaptation yeah. of that French play. And uh, there was a play made in India on it with, where Nasiruddin Shah played the played the oh, father. That would have been amazing to see. It blew my mind. I ca- I can't tell you how amazing and how intense that performance was. Uh, I haven't seen the film. I'm probably going to watch it tomorrow. Yeah, um, beautiful. Because I haven't found a decent print of it. So I want to get like a good Blu-ray print of it before I can watch it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I, I don't know this. How did you actually get started in the industry? Uh, completely by accident. I never intended to be an actor. I wanted to be, I was trained in Hindustani classical singing and I wanted to be a playback singer. Oh. And uh, yeah, and I, I was just singing for a stage show where somebody asked me if I was interested in acting and I said, yeah, why not? Because. You know, I'd moved to Bombay two years before that with my family. This was 2008, and it just felt exciting to be on TV. I guess you know, for a 13-year-old's brain, that's how it functions, and you think that oh, it'll be exciting to do something, but I get to come on TV. That was honestly my biggest motivation at that point in time, and I started auditioning from 2008, and yeah, it's great. I got into it. What's your What's your favorite thing? Well, I guess there's two things. What would be your favorite thing about being an actor, and what's your least favorite thing about being an actor? Um, and it could, it could say more than one thing. It doesn't have to be one of each. Sure. I think my favorite thing about being an actor is that you get to really live so many lives in one life by, mm-hmm. like, really putting yourself in somebody else's body and mind and soul completely. You know. I feel acting is a very psychophysical process for me. It's not just about reading a script and understanding what the writer is trying to say, but also allowing my body to experience the way the character is written and whatever the character is going through. Because, uh, you know, the mind can dispute and knows, knows that it's lying, but the body can't dispute. The body will take what, it, what you give it. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. Um, so I, I love doing that. I think that's, that's my favorite part about uh, being an actor about... Actually... I enjoy shooting a lot, but I also really enjoy living the person before I start shooting. Because there's no parameters, there are no boundaries. I could do whatever, I could improvise in life, go wherever, do whatever, and get away with everything, you know. There's no retakes, yes. there's, there's nothing, there's no consequence. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Are, you, are you interested in um, TV shows, OTT platforms, stuff in the future? Yeah, I think that's the way forward, right? Everything has happened, everything is going to come on digital yeah sure yeah yeah absolutely i think you'd be great on on a couple like mizapur you'd, you'd probably be really good on mizapur in what Sorry, mizapur, the the series with uh, uh and yeah oh mizapur. Mizapur. Yes. yes yeah yeah we always mispronounce it <laughs> sorry <laughs> um uh, so my least favorite thing is uh, probably I don't know, probably like, um, I'm not sure, like, you know, I, I don't feel very comfortable with attention. Mm. Um, also because like, the beauty of being anonymous and of doing these things that you want to do as an actor, um, it, it gets sacrificed at the cost of vanity and at the cost of becoming like popular and famous. Because then you can't really feel like a spy and do whatever you want to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, that, that's something that I'm still struggling to deal with. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. 
Well, uh, I do want to thank you so much for, for chatting with us. I'd like to end this off with a little bit of a rapid fire uh, questions here, man. Uh, just stupid questions. Uh, yeah. So, like, coffee or chai? Which do you prefer? Coffee. Mm, black? Just yeah, coffee. Uh, yeah. Favorite Hollywood film? Forrest Gump. Mm, oh. Love it. Favorite Hollywood yeah, actor? Oh, sorry. Well, not so many. How do you choose? <laughs> you you kind of went through it before. Um, so, yeah, your favorite Indian film, any region. Um, favorite Indian film. It's a tough one, guys. <laughs> Gangs of Wasipur. Ooh, love it. Uh, you'd be fantastic in a Nyanyarad Kashyap film. Uh, what are yeah. some of your pet peeves? Pet what? Pet peeves. What annoys you? Things that, things that annoy you. Things that annoy me. Um, when people don't come on time. Mm. Absolutely. Come and, with you, brother. <laughs> uh, favorite hobby? Besides acting. Um... I think uh, I really enjoy singing and I really enjoy working with animals. Mm. Uh, hold on. I, I love to run as well. You love to run? I love to run. I love to go out on runs on the road. Oh. Fa uh, hold on. Somebody told me the favorite breakfast, favorite thing to eat for breakfast. Favorite thing to eat for breakfast. Um... I'd love like a good smoothie bowl. Mm. Mm. Acai bowl? Mm. Delicious. Yeah, like a good, good like smoothie bowl with lots of fruits and lots of seeds and uh, some good Greek yogurt. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who's, nice. your fa who's your favorite director? I have so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but if I had to choose, Stanley Kubrick, Alfred mm. Hitchcock, David Fincher and Anurag Kashyap. Great choices. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, lastly, who, uh, since you're you trained to be a classical singer, who, in your opinion, is the best classical singer? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's so many good classical singers. Mm -hmm. I really like Ustad Rashid Khan. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I just wanted to put you on the spot there. So thank you so much for answering that. <laughs> we, 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 actually, we actually interviewed um, uh, Shreya Ghoshal, uh, and people were upset that we didn't have her sing on the channel. Yes. Uh, so uh, we, I could have had you sing on the channel. <laughs> She's like a nightingale, bro. She's, yeah. she's got such a sweet voice. She is wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. She is. But thank Absolutely you beautiful. so much for, for talking to us, man. You are... You are you are a wonderful, wonderful actor. We are so excited for everything that you're going to do in in Hollywood, in Indian cinema, it, all over. Because one, you care so much about the craft, uh, and and you're so so talented. And so uh, we're we're very much looking forward to uh, to uh, all, any projects that you have coming up. And so thank you so much for talking to us, Rick. Thank yeah, you, uh, I, the exact same thing. Like I said in our review, the standout thing for us in the film was you. And we became really excited about the prospect of watching you continue to work. And we immediately, the, we wanted to talk to you because as being actors ourselves, we love talking process. We love talking about the craft and we love getting to know actors. And you are exactly what we had anticipated based from your work. You are an extraordinarily articulate, intelligent, insightful, self uh, appreciating and examining for yourself. And we really are not only excited about the work you're gonna do, but we believe in you. We, we really believe that you are one of the most inspiring up and coming talents that not just India, but that the world of film has right now and that great things are really in store for you. And we're just going to be happy to watch you do it. Oh, man, you make me cry now, bro. Thank you. <laughs> 100% from the heart. Thank well, you, Thank you, you, yeah. you have a, a great rest of your night, man. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great okay. night. Bye. Bye. -bye.